Well, hello and welcome to the Institute of Health and Social Care Management's latest in its 20 minute social series today. We are filled live from our house in Denmark, of all places, to welcome Morton Matheson from Sequoia. Sequoia are digital care planning experts and Morton is their chief marketing officer. But he gets involved in all sorts of stuff to do with customer relationships and such like. Morton, I must say, it's fantastic to have you with us. How was your Christmas? Thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate that you've uh, found me to be an expert and uh, and wanted me on the show. Um, I've had a wonderful Christmas, spent with uh, my family. And uh, despite the situation, we had a, a really a good uh, festive period. Fantastic. Well, I'm delighted to hear it. Let's move straight into the nuts and bolts of this. So one of the things I'm interested in is have we made the business of care planning more complicated than it needs to be? Is it more complicated these days than it was in the past? And, and by all means, you know, refer to Sequoia's activity in, in your answer. But is it more challenging to do care planning now than was previously the case? Well, both yes and no, I would say. Um, if you go into a, a proper nursing home today, it's more like a hospital so the complexity of care has obviously only gone one way up. And um, that means the care planning is also more difficult and you need to be able to also in care, well, take that into consideration when you do the care planning. Uh, that's one side of it. But all of that used to go on only in paper. So that used to be quite cumbersome and take up a lot of resources and a lot of administrative uh, time. So I think the answer is really both yes and no. Uh, for the provider and for the people that work in care, it's more complex, I would say. Uh, but with tools like Sequoia and all of the other good care planning companies out there, uh, I would say no. It's actually it's easier today. You can uh, you can plan ahead with recurrence patterns and all of the stuff that you really couldn't consider before. You don't have to duplicate your paperwork and all of that stuff. You can have all the information you need just right in the palm of your hand. Uh, so I would say with with products like ours, it's it's easier today. And tell me, if, if you're going to do care planning properly, what are the key elements that you need to plan? Are, are there particular themes or streams of, of planning activity that you need to get spot on? Yeah, well, obviously, it's very much depending on the residents or the people that you take care of. What care plans do they have and what do you want to deliver on? What are the outcomes you want to create? Uh, based on that, you do your planning and then you obviously sum that up into activities and uh, tasks and uh, assessments that you ad hoc uh, complete with your residents. But what we really advocate is that you include the residents or the service users into your planning. So it's not what's going to happen to me. It's what's what are we actually uh, looking at when you're doing my care plans and uh, what we like to think that's quite unique in what's happening now when you see the like with all digital transformation care planning is also going through one of those so you, you you were looking at generation one products that were very computerized and you were sitting in the office and only perhaps one or two people in your organization would be able to do the digital version now it's everyone involved and it means that you can actually take your care plans out into the residents rooms and ask them is this really the way you want your food presented or is this really how you want uh, to go to the bathroom or all the things that's actually going on and happening to someone can be with them instead and um, and when you digitalize stuff it's also very often a question about your strategy as a company or or um, perhaps even your vision how do we want to do this and with the different types of solutions that's in the marketplace today, I think that most organizations will be able to find a digital uh, supplement or replacement of the paper they used to do to handle all of these things. So I think it's, it's a good situation as a provider to look into the marketplace today and see there are actually quite a few people that can meet our needs for care planning. Perfect. Okay, look, help us you know, imagine that I'm a lay uh, social care manager, I could be in domiciliary yeah. care, care home planning, adult social services, whatever it might be. Yeah. What are the typical mistakes that I make that, that you know, you, you would be keen to help me overcome? What, 
What are the typical problems that people encounter? Well, I think it's, it's, it's two pillars really we're looking at. You're looking at one that's, um, that's got to do with time and time management and making the best of the resources you have available, especially in these situations we're in now. Uh, and then the other one has to do with the quality of care. And I think with a good care planning solution, you're able to actually influence both of those two pillars. Uh, two independent studies were carried out from provider side uh, involving Sequoia, where we did not take part, one in Stratford and one in Kent. And both of them showed that on, a, on an everyday basis, people working in care, so a, a care worker or a care, healthcare assistant would save one and a half hour doing their paperwork every day when using Sequoia versus when they were only paper-based. So that's a lot of time to put back into the care service. So that's got to do with quantity of time, et cetera. And that's, that's one of the pillars. It influences the other one where you're talking about the quality of care. So I think when you're looking at recordings of the care that you have provided, it's also, it's always quite reactive. It's documenting what you have done and not really helping you and assisting you in what you are about to do or what you're really doing now. And I think that's the other sort of place or where care planning solutions can really help. Something that's in Sequoia is instructions, we call them. It's videos or photos or even documents that help you take care of the people that you're actually taking care of. So it could be all the way from an organizational level. So this is how we have our policies, et cetera, down to I am hoisting this person, but in his room, it's a very narrow space. How can I do it really well in here? So let's do a small video of that and put it in our care planning solution. So when I'm working on this particular care plan, moving and handling or something like that, uh, I have this particular activity with a named individual who reacts to being moved or hoisted or whatever in a particular way. You can actually address that. So if you're his contact person or the one he sees most often, then obviously you will know yourself, but what happens when you're on holiday or temp staff or in, et cetera, you can, you can prolong what you know about this person and really provide a, a person centered approach or even a person led approach, which is the movement that we really try to, to um, uh, indulge and, and actually support because yeah, I think when, when we're looking at older age ourselves, how, how would we like it done to us or with us and with our improvement? Uh, so, yeah, I think that's, if that's an answer. <laughs> no, I think, it's a t I think it's a terrific answer. You know, the idea of, of properly embracing a personalization of care. I, I, yeah. I love that as a, as a concept. And I know how difficult it is to do. You know, my mother-in-law passed away last year, but she spent the last a couple of years of her life in a, in a care home nursing home yeah. and worked incredibly yeah. hard but equally you know if you were there listening to the staff working with her yeah. the amount of times they were having to exchange inform key information about her care verbally yeah. or with a little piece of paper you know yeah. it's it, it this idea of being able to properly and professionally personalize people's care i think is a is a huge element of what needs to be done. I'd like to bring in Jane, if I may. We've got Jane yeah. Brightman here as well on the call today. Jane's our general manager for social care specifically. Mm -hmm. Jane, have you got any uh, further comments you'd like to make with or, or for Morton? Mm -hmm. I have, and I love that idea of person-led instead of person-centred, because I think people get confused about person-centred, but person-led is really clear. So that's, that's great. That's sticking in my brain. Um, Morton, I wanted to ask you about... Mm -hmm relatives and uh, loved ones you know family friends and one of the big things that they felt particularly during the pandemic is shut out you know not able to know what's going on particularly where a relative or a loved one has moved into a, a setting and they weren't able to visit it they have no idea what, what their bedroom looks like and what the food's like and all of those sorts of things have you any thoughts about how that two-way communication might improve between care homes, residents and relatives, loved ones, family carers, and how, how might the system that you have help that? Yeah, well, well, first of all, I've been extremely impressed with the 
under pressure providers and especially of course the people that work in their services how they've taken on whatsapp and zoom and all the types of off the shelf apps that are on people's phones and made use of them to communicate and enable people in their services to stay in contact with their relatives and families etc so i think one thing is to have that as a a massive contribution to the situation we're in now and uh, hats off for that and then another thing is the more formalized and gdp gdpr protected communication where you actually also uh, talking about person uh, people's real needs and things that has to be uh, compliant to to certain regulations etc um, here we offer also a, a communications platform it isn't as perfect as we would like it because it's something that's obviously only increased over the last year or so but you're able to stay in contact um, and make sure that you can communicate needs etc and you can exchange photos and stuff like that but besides that, I really often encourage the people that use Sequoia to have an app next door to our app that's supplementing them in the ways that they um, feel is needed in their service. If you look at learning disabilities organizations, they've had a massive use of various types of apps and could have uh, proper um, family hangouts going on in their, um, in their services. So I think that if there's anything good to come out of this with our digital glasses on, I think it is the massive use of free of use, uh, free of charge apps that's been rolled out across so many of the providers that we support today. And where we could say, obviously, they could also use Sequoia for some of that, but I'm actually encouraging them to use things that all of their care staff already use themselves personally and can just click it on right away and then they're, they're off to and go. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? How the inadequacies of Wi-Fi systems yes. in many uh, facilities uh, were exposed very early in this. And, okay. and, you know, with people unable to use some of those technologies that you've just described and, and how quickly people have had to smarten up their acts, really, and, 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 and find solutions for Wi-Fi provision and so on. It's often the basic things that have been overlooked historically and all of a sudden, circumstances demand that they're taken seriously. Uh, it's, <laughs> in some respects, it's disappointing that those things, you know, still existed. I, I know if you look in the hospital sector here in the UK, you know, there's many, many hospitals where the Wi-Fi reception is appalling. And there's been a, a, a determination to improve upon it through various government uh, policies and so on, but it's still lagging way I was, I was the... I've got a sort of a final question for you, really, Morton, which is, all right, so I, I've never had the privilege of using the Sequoia system, but help me understand, what's next for digital care planning? What, what does the future hold? What are the things that you're working at now that you're going to be bringing in over the coming years that you're going to think, well, that is going to be a real wow for next generation digital care planning? I, I like that question, obviously. It gives me a chance to shine a bit. <laughs> no. Well, first of all, I'm actually really impressed with a lot of our competitors too. When I look at how the market is today versus five years ago when I first started to work in the UK, um, there's so many integrations today. And um, you're looking at workforce management solutions being tied together with care planning solutions or EMAR solutions, the same. So kudos to, to those uh, competitors out there who, who are really far ahead on that track. We're working on some of the same stuff also and, um, and have good news coming up in, in 2021. But what I'm really interested in is actually something I touched upon earlier also, is how, how we need to stop being reactive and only document what's happened in the past, but look at how our massive use of documentation and, and there's far more data in social care than there is in health, not that those need to be compared like that, but there's so much data that's being just flushed every day in social care that we can make use of. And how can we become more uh, proactive? And that's one of the things we're looking at now. So we're working with a provider down in Surrey and looking at in a very early stage, how we can 
start predict uh, their service users needs um, and the first results are looking fantastic so uh, what we did was with a um, another platform that's called Jilly, um, recommended to us by um, uh, the CEO of uh, UKHCA, Jane Townsend. We started uh, exploring with Jilly, which is a Finnish company. It's a global world, isn't it? <laughs> uh, we started to explore how we could take data from this provider and send it into their system and via their analytics uh, platform, start predicting on the residents' needs and and when we correlate the data that we have sort of in an Excel spreadsheet today with uh, the needs that uh, over a period of time, the provider told us uh, the residents needs, how they developed also, what we have predicted was exactly the same things as they found over that period of time. So they still stayed, let's say, in the reactive realm and looked back at data, said, okay, who's the next pe person to to have a fall, who's the next person to, if for instance, a dementia sufferer, who's the next person to start wondering, or who will have uh, the next uh, bad behavior in our service. And we singled out three people that we thought were the next people to uh, have serious issues or serious needs or a change of needs. And what we really look at is the pattern of their data. So it's not, uh, not looking at the person and, and trying to observe their behavior. Of course, staff are. So what we're experiencing and what we're finding it to be uh, predictive care planning is to assist staff in um, obtaining a better understanding of the residents that they take care of. And I think that has to be the next thing. So it will be, I'm not saying it's a, it's a whole new generation of products, but it's a better use of the data that's already there. there. And, um, and then assisting people that work in a very, busy and stressful environment to perhaps get a, a notch early on <laughs> to say, well, perhaps we should have an extra look at Morton today. Um, are the signs that we're seeing, are they truly the signs that you're also experiencing? And based on that, what are then our next actions? <laughs> Morton, that's a great answer. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to give you the opportunity to make a wish. OK, I sometimes give people three wishes. We haven't quite got time for the three wishes. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> I'm going to give you I'm going to give you the opportunity in a minute to make one wish which would transform our ability to plan care properly. OK, so you can start to think about that in a moment. Yes. But let me just recap, because I, I love this idea of, of predictive data and using data analytically mm -hmm. to determine what the care needs of people are going to be in, in the future. I think that's a fantastic answer to that question that I gave earlier on. I, I'm going to be fascinated to see how that emerges. Thank you. But now I've given you the opportunity to think about your wish. Here you are, you're the, you know, here in the UK, <laughs> typically this time of year, it's pantomime season. Yes. So you, you can be... I'm going to be your genie, okay? <laughs> and you can be Aladdin. I'm granting you this wish. You know, you've polished my lamp. Yeah. You know, you. It's your <laughs> wish. What's your wish, Morton? Oh, it's a big one. Uh, and I'm actually, I'm pretty sure I'm going to disappoint you because it, it's not going to be very techish. My wish then would be to, uh, uh, it's a two-step two rack, uh, rocket I have here. My wish is that, Digital, digitalization will be as part of care provider organizations real strategy so when you choose a product that you want to work with then choose something that fits your strategy if you're a learning disabilities organization then don't feel that you need to use something that's actually born and bred and only used in residential care have something follow your strategy um, and then the other part of that is so is this a second wish, Morton? No, no, it's 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 a it's a twofold one. Sorry, that's okay. That's okay. I just want so to this clarify. Is my, this is my real this is my real uh, wish. Then it is to stop looking at technology as something that's the icing on the cake or something that you're doing in a separate track. No, it's part of your strategy. Strategy, and then consider implementation. Be really serious about people having to use this as. Um, as a replacement of what you did before. 
Um, and that that's not done overnight. Some will say, well, we can we can do this in a day and then you're just up and running. That may be true, but in, in which state are you up and running? No, be, be really serious about people and the, and the massive change it is to go from paper to digital. All right, look, our time is up on the 20 minute social. I've got to thank Jane for her insights uh, and, and, and questions. I'm, Morton, I've got to thank you. That was <laughs> an absolute masterclass. Thank you so much for being our 20 minute social guest today. And of course, I grant you your wish. Actually, it was wishes, but that's okay. <laughs> You're a nice guy, so we'll let you go with that. <laughs> okay. You. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for listening in or watching today. And do keep a lookout for the next in our 20 minute social series. But for now, Morton, thank you. Jane, thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>